Welcome to Tim's Vital Confessions, everyone. I'm Tim Burling. Uh, glad to have everyone back, and I'm really pleased to welcome a special guest to the show. He's never been on the show before. Uh, you may have seen him on YouTube with his own channel, Monkey Sensing Sensei. Mr. Derek Tyler. Derek, how are you? I'm great, Tim. Thanks for having me on today. It's been a pleasure. So, Derek, talk to, talk to us a little bit about your channel before we get into today's episode. Okay, so like you mentioned earlier, I am Monkey Sensing Sensei on YouTube. I just do a lot of vinyl reviews. I talk about music. My, I have a series called Meditation Through Vinyl, where I talk about records that I love and just things I want to talk about. And then I have a special series I call Perfect Zen, where it's basically my favorite albums of all time put into an episode. And those are very special. So I don't upload them a lot. But when I do, you know it's a special album to me. Very cool. So, um, yeah, we've been planning this episode for a while. This one's going to be about Led Zeppelin, because why not? Um, I've actually never done a Led Zeppelin cassette episode. It was, uh, you know, something I like to do in the, in the form, all the formats if I can. And uh, Derek wanted to do an episode. I said, you know, let's list some common bands. Led Zeppelin came up. This is actually cool because I'm going to show off my Led Zeppelin cassettes, but Derek actually has um, some examples of something I don't have any of, and that is the 2014 uh, vinyl reissues of the Led Zeppelin catalog. He's got a few of those to talk about. So we're going to go do this album by album on this episode. So we'll start off with the debut Zeppelin album, 1969. This is a Canadian copy um, on Atlantic Records. It's actually a Canadian Columbia House version. You can see it says, that's blurry if I hold it up, but it's CRC right here, Columbia Record Club. Yeah, that's what the back of it looks like. This no, one's that's a, interesting. It's this almost is a like... kind of a, a fairly newer, I say newer issue. It's prior to the 1994 reissues, but this is in really, really good shape. Yeah, I was thinking it's almost like modern, like an older version of Vinyl Me Please or something like that, where you pay a subscription and you get you get a record in the month every in the mail every month. That's pretty much what Columbia House was, yeah, and it, it dates all the way back to the '60s. So you have a copy of the debut Zeppelin album on one of these 2014 remasters, which I've never seen. So I'm looking forward to seeing these. Yep, the debut. You got that beautiful 12-inch cover. That's excellent. And of course, you have the four guys in the back here. And one thing I love is that the late 60s, you can have, you can see that they're wearing their late 60s British sweaters. Just classic it, stuff. I love this cover. Yeah, it, it's cool um, because they very quickly, because right then they look like any number of British rock bands taking pictures in the late 60s. But very quickly, they just developed their own musical style, but also their own, I guess you could say fashion sense. There's no mistaking a photo of Led Zeppelin for any other band. Right. And production style, too, which I'm sure we'll get into in a little bit. Yeah, for sure. Uh, definitely groundbreaking on in so many ways. Second Zeppelin album, also 1969. This is actually a U.S. copy. A um, little bit older issue. These have been reissued so many times. So it's, you know, none of these are original, certainly. But um, and uh, this is actually. Um, yeah, I'm trying to look at think about this here no i guess i guess this one's in order some of the cassettes are in a weird order and that's what the u.s cassettes used to look like before they started coming up with the clear colored cassettes any led zeppelin 2 uh memorabilia derek yes i do i got the same thing 2014 i love the cover of this one too it's always hard to tell where the band members are i know you have some like army guys in here or like soldiers and then always it's always hard to tell who's who i don't know who this guy is who's got the wide eyes and i don't know if you can tell me who that yeah. is that okay so that's an in joke um that's actually a british supposed to be a british actress named glennis johns and that's a reference to glenn johns who was the um engineer on the first zeppelin album oh okay he's also the older brother of andy johns who was also also worked with zeppelin and went on to be a producer in his own right um, yeah, the first album was the only one Glenn Johns worked on. He and Jimmy Page kind of clashed in the studio. So that's an in-joke. That's actually Glennis Johns, or that's who that's supposed to be. Oh, I even know. That's actually kind of cool. I didn't know that. So you learn something new every day. Is that a gatefold? Is yes, that, it is. Yeah, it's a beautiful... Oh, that's a, such a beautiful... Um, 
yeah, the photo of the Zeppelin there with the the, the spotlights. That's just and, such and, a classic. I've always kind of wondered why they didn't stretch that across the full twenty four inch canvas, but I know they should have. And I like I will say I like how they have the track listing here too. And one thing to note is I got this used on eBay. So there's a track on here called Living Loving Made. Yep. But if you look at the vinyl, let's see. Ah, here we go. It'll say on side two. I don't know if I have like a European copy that was mispressed, but it says Living Loving Rick. Oh. Yeah. And I looked it up. It's the same dot matrices in the dead wax as okay. the 2014. So you probably can't really see that, but it says Living Loving Rick. So I thought that was interesting. I got a mispress is... on my copy. Yeah. That could be worth something. I don't know. I like the fact that they reprinted the classic red and green Atlantic labels on the record itself. Those that's cool to see, but yeah, that's yeah, interesting. That living, living us. wreck. The only thing that that makes me think of, I know deep purple have a song on in rock called living wreck, but why they would, uh, yeah, that's interesting. Huh? So third Zeppelin album, this is one that you really got to have on vinyl in some sort. Uh, Led Zeppelin three. This is a Canadian cassette, uh, as always on Atlantic. Nothing, um, nothing inside of it for credits, but on vinyl is where like this is a really cool thing to see on vinyl. So unfortunately, I don't have a copy of Led Zeppelin three. I, I actually have one coming in the mail, but it hasn't arrived in on time. But I will say it is one of my favorites. Yeah, and it's an album that's it's really cool because the dynamic. Yeah, with yeah, like you the, can... yeah, you have the dial that you can spin has all the different photos. Yeah, it's really supposed to be time. based on a crop rotation uh, chart. That's where the, the idea behind that came from. And, and and such a different album for them, too. Primarily acoustic, but some of uh, some of the most groundbreaking production work. Uh, Jimmy Page starting to get into the different guitar tunings, like on songs like Friends, and just a lot of cool stuff on that album. Next one is uh, kind of an oddity. Of course, it's the fourth Led Zeppelin album. This is one of many issues. Uh, that have been over the years. This is a Canadian copy. But what's odd about this, and um, I'm going to try and hold it up out of its case because I know we get a glare here, but the order of the songs on here is mixed up. So I don't know if people can read this or not, but basically side one is Black Dog, Battle of Evermore, Going to California, When the Levee Breaks. Side two is Misty Mountain Hop, Four Sticks, Rock and Roll, and Stairway to Heaven, which doesn't even make any sense. I mean, of all of the albums to mix up the song orders, like people are used to this album in this order. So I don't understand why they felt the need to do this. Obviously, the later issues, they corrected the track listing. But if somebody grew up listening to this and this is what they were used to, they might be in for a shock to find out that's not how it was intended. That's like that's like Beatles fans in the U.S. who grew up with the U.S. albums, and then they get the U.K. track listing. It's like, whoa, what is this? This is totally different than what I'm used to. Yeah, exactly. So, have you got anything pertaining to Led Zeppelin four? Yes, this was actually the first one I bought. So, talk. About I love the classic. cover here. The guy with the yeah. four sticks. Yeah. And I love the mystery behind this album too. Even the band doesn't know what it's called. Some people say Led Zeppelin four. Some people say Zoso. Some yeah. people say like symbols because each is four symbols, like the four guys in the band. The mystery. Yeah. I've always called it Led Zeppelin 4, but it really doesn't have a title. Love yeah. the wizard. But as iconic as anything can be. Yeah. This like is on a lot of t shirts. Yeah. Yeah. The stuff begs to be in a gatefold. And. Uh, no words of text anywhere on the front or back cover, which is unheard of. But yet, everybody knows what it is. Exactly. This was a time, too, when before record stores would seal their vinyl. So you just had to even open up the gatefold or you could look inside the vinyl and see what it looked like. A lot of, again, a lot of Beatles albums would do that, especially Beatles for sale. You open it up and like, oh, there's the track listing because they weren't sealed. So you could just do that back then. That's cool. I didn't know that. I didn't know they never used to, to seal them. Um, next up, fifth Led Zeppelin album, Houses of the Holy. Uh, this is an old U.S. cassette. Um, and, um, 
happy to say the songs are actually in order on here. Just a white cassette. Um, interesting artwork on this one. Um, I know some copies have a wraparound band and um, some of the newer issues are a different color scheme. Have you got any Houses of the Holy editions? Unfortunately, I don't have that one either, but I do know that they have the deluxe editions. They have the two LP that have live coverage and they have a lot of just bonus tracks and demos. And they have that, they do have that band around it for either or edition. Yeah. And I know that one has a pretty nice gatefold. I actually like the inside image more than so than the actual cover itself. It me looks too. something like a Roger Dean cover. Yeah, me too. Yes, or one of the other number of bands he's worked with. Yeah. And I yeah. love House of the Holy too, because it's a very experimental record. Like you have the crunch, and you have Did Your Maker, which I don't even know if that's pronounced in that right, but Did Your Maker is a great it's song. To be. Yeah. Uh, no quarters, stuff. fantastic, over the hills and far away. Yeah, it's a it's um it's a really deep, uh, fun album, and it's really like a mid-period album for them where it doesn't sound anything like the first couple and it kind of points the way to the future of course they really you know went all out on the next one physical graffiti this is a canadian cassette of course you're losing the you know the die cut not having it on vinyl but we've i've talked about the led zeppelin vinyl before um because cassettes held more this has all of the tracks on on just one cassette um and um I do believe that they're in order too. Sometimes they mix up. No, these are not in order. Um, I'm going to read the track listing because most people know the order that the songs are supposed to go in. Custard Pie, The Rover, In My Time of Dying, Night Flight, The Wanton Song, Boogie with Stew, Black Country Woman, Sick Again. Side two is Houses of the Holy, Trampled Underfoot, Cashmere, In the Light, Bronior, Bronior, I've never said that right. Down by the seaside, 10 years gone. It almost looks like they went side one, side four, side two, and side three. And that's how they they did the order for this cassette. I'm not sure why. Uh, have you got a copy of Physical Graffiti? I don't, another one I don't have on vinyl, but I do have a cassette of it. But it's yeah, not in any kind of case. Yeah. So I actually have it's just a white one. That's a U.S. one then, yeah. Okay. I wonder, um, I'm trying to read the track listing on that. And that Custard one actually... Pie, the Rover, In My Time of Dying, House of the Holy, Trembled Underfoot, Cashmere, and Bron Yar. That's side one. Okay, and so it, side... this one actually looks like it's in order. It's in the, if, if that's the right order for side one. Yep, so yeah, if I remember correctly, side two, yeah, it's, it's definitely in the right order. So I wonder if the U.S. did it differently. Of course, you have yeah. the Swan Song label, which is this pretty is cool. all messed up. Interesting. Um, I've got a kind of a weird-looking cassette for Presence. Um, this one looks really weird because this is an old U.S. Columbia House cassette, and they would have these the white border at the top and bottom, and this really, really bland design on the side. You've got these two pink strips and just the name of the group, um, a little picture of the Swan Song logo. I'll take it out of the case here. But uh, yeah, kind of, just kind of a bland uh, looking design, back of it. And um, the cassette itself looks more or less like a U.S. cassette would look. But I uh, believe these songs are, um, these ones are in the proper order. Presence is a, is a really different looking uh, album jacket too, because it's Hypnosis. It's, I think it's uh, 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 Aubrey, Aubrey Powell uh, or Poe did this one and of course you only see the one image here of the 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 object or the obelisk on this table but it shows up in all of these various scenes if anyone's ever seen the in inside and outside of the um the present record is that one that you've got a a version of yes i do actually so i actually have the walmart exclusive version that came out with the replica backstage pass they came out with the first album they did four, and then they did presents, and they actually just re-released a few of the other ones too. So I'll show you the inside of the gatefold because it is really cool. Yeah. So what I believe these pictures are supposed to represent with the object, I believe, is that these are normal, happy, everyday photos, but then putting something like a dark object in it couldn't just darken the tone of anything. Yeah, it's interesting. Walmart in Canada, at least any of the Walmarts in my area, none of them carry vinyl. And I always see these Walmart exclusives and think, well, you know, I'd buy some of these if they were in my area. 
me get out the replica backstage pass too. Ah, here we go. It almost looks like a coaster. Okay. Yeah, that's a very old fashioned. Um, that's what they used to be shaped like. Yeah, they, they totally looked like something you'd set a drink on. I'm curious, uh, Derek, what does the, the record itself look like? inside of presence because by now they they should have been using the swan song uh label yep and in fact just have the swan song label there you go the familiar looking i I figured that's what it would look like but yeah uh not an album a lot of people talk about it's got one of my favorite zeppelin songs on it in, in nobody's fault but mine oh that's a good one achilles last stand is definitely an epic song that i really enjoy off this record some of John Bonham's, I think, most powerful, best drumming on that track. And that's that's hard because, I mean, he was, he's great on just about every song. So also 1976, um, this one's actually a double cassette. Soundtrack of the song remains the same. This is a two cassette package uh, that's Canadian. And um, ones I got here in really, really good shape. Now, they stretch a lot of these songs out. So like side one... All of side one is dazed and confused. Okay, no, that's the second cassette, sorry. So cassette one, rock and roll, celebration day. The song remains the same, rain song. Side two is no quarter, stairway to heaven. Side one of tape two is dazed and confused, takes up the entire side. And then side two is Moby Dick and a whole lot of love. Um, not my Definitely not my favorite live album from these guys. I, there's other ones that have come out since that are, are better, but you know you kind of have to have it. Like how the West was won, I believe that is isn't that what's called? Yeah, that's a really good one, and I I really like the reunion uh, celebration day. I I think they sounded really good on that for a, a you know a latter day performance. And um, so the next one is the 1979. Uh, I've gone contrarian on this. This is my favorite Zeppelin album. I know it's most it's not most folks' favorite, but it's in through the outdoor. Now, the cassette I have is a Canadian one, and rather than do the, the barroom scene, they just kind of reproduced the uh, paper bag that the records would come in. Um, but for whatever reason, I've always really had a soft spot for this album. Um, it's not a popular opinion, even though it sold millions of, of copies. Have you, have you got a version of that? No, I don't actually own that one. That one's probably my least favorite Led Zeppelin record. If I it's pick most people's. Favorite. It's most people's least favorite. I'm I'm the odd one for for really liking that one, but it's also the first one I heard all the way through. So, um, so then the the I guess you could call it the final Led Zeppelin album came out in 1982, Coda, and this was some uh, unreleased songs. Not all of the unreleased songs they had, but it was an eight song collection. This is a Canadian cassette, and this uh, this was pretty much it. I mean, this is the last kind of new material that they would come out with. Um, and the only other thing I've got to talk about is, um, it's another dual cassette set of the BBC sessions. This is a U.S. copy. It's on two tapes. So they kind of go together like there's a one, one and a two on the side here. Um, this is some good material too, that was, that had been bootlegged for many years. Um, so what are your, some of your favorite, uh, Led Zeppelin albums, if you had to list them in any sort of order? I would say my favorite is probably Led Zeppelin 2. And then Led Zeppelin 1, 4, 3, Physical Graffiti, uh, how, uh, I think Presence, and then In Through the Outdoor. And then Coda be all the way, probably at the bottom. Yeah. I, I, lend to, I tend to go more towards the earlier bluesy Zeppelin because I'm a fan of the blues from the 60s. You know, Jimi Hendrix would do the blues. I love Steve Ray Vaughan like B.B. King, all those blues artists, them taking that and incorporating hard rock to it, I think it's just beautiful. I, I'm still loving you. T for One from Presence is great. Um, I Can't Quit You, Baby, I Love. Uh, you Shook Me. And then uh, Days of Confused. Especially, one thing I love Days of Confused, I love when Robert Plant does the high vocal and then Jimmy Page follows that with the guitar tone that sounds just like the vocal. Yeah. That's yeah. something I love that, especially hearing that on the vinyl. It's really unique. You'll hear it in one speaker, and then you'll hear their, it's like a call and response. You'll hear Robert Plant, and then you'll hear Jimmy Page, and it's done about three or four times. And then they get into this big jammy bit, and it's just, it's 
excellent way to build up from the first three tracks, almost like how when you go to side two, you get the next three tracks and then it ends with how many more times. And that's like the ultimate ending to that album. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, and also, like Jimmy Page was such a pioneer in in the production side of it, using things like echo and backwards echo and um, really studying the proper way to mic a drum set to make, you know, to make it sound as powerful as it can possibly be. Um, and there's so much, for, there, there is a lot of variety as you go through the catalog. But yeah, if you're into the, you know, if you're into the heavy amplified blues, it's pretty hard to top those, those first two albums. And, you know, it's not a huge catalog to, um, to discuss, but it's a catalog that will, I don't think, never uh, not be popular. Some, somebody somewhere years from now will be discovering those Led Zeppelin albums and, and getting into them. And, and uh, that's the great thing about classic music that, that lasts. So, Derek, what, uh, what have you got coming up uh, on your channel that you'd like to uh, folks to know about? All right, so next, I'm actually going to be doing my Rush Vinyl Marathon. So I'm going to start going from Crest of Steel all the way up to Clockwork Angels. I did do a video mentioning my whole Rush Vinyl collection, but since then, I've gotten quite a bit. So now I pretty much have everything from Crest of Steel all the way up until Hold Your Fire, then I got some holes, and I have Vapor Trails and Clockwork Angels. And good luck finding some of the other ones because they're pricey and out of print. So I got that coming up. I'm kind of writing the script for that now. And then I'm probably going to do a top five Rush albums. And then I might just start doing a Led Zeppelin rep, rep, uh, retrospective. And then we'll see what I get from there. I usually just showcase what I buy new. So whatever comes out, I buy it. And I'm like, okay, I'll listen to it a few times. And then I'll film my reaction and my review. And then just go from there. Cool. So people follow, follow Monkey Sensing Sensei on youtube and uh, follow derek on twitter that's how we we got to know each other so derek thanks for for talking some led zeppelin with me today and uh showing off those cool reissues of the vinyl albums which i'd never seen before i really appreciate that all right tim thanks for having me on it was a great episode always good to talk led zeppelin and uh folks Absolutely. Subscribe, subscribe to derek's channel uh keep following mine and you know the more great content out there the better and thanks, everyone, for watching this edition of Tim's Vinyl Confessions.